What's up, Reed Temple fam? Let's get into this week's announcements. Reed Temple Bible College presents Principles of Bible Study. Registration for spring 2023 is from December 19th to January 14th, 2023. Classes begin Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Apply online at www.reedtemplebiblecollege.org. Have you heard of Reed Temple's Sponsor a Child program? This is an annual program that provides Christmas gifts to children in need. You can register a child to be sponsored to receive a gift for Christmas or sponsor a child to receive a gift for Christmas. For those who are fortunate to help bless children with a holiday gift or donation, please visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Reed Temple, in partnership with Capital Area Food Bank, presents the drive through food distribution at Reed Temple, Saturday, December 17th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., while supplies last. Distributions will take place on the third Saturday of each month. Reed Temple presents Christmas Sunday service. Come celebrate the holidays on Sunday, December 25th at 9.30 a.m. For additional information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Reed Temple family, come bring in the new year with us for our watch night service, Saturday, December 31st, 12 p.m. and 10 p.m. For more information, visit reedsimple.org forward slash events. Reed Simple AME Church Marriage Ministry presents the Marriage University Christmas Fellowship, Saturday, December 17th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Join us for some holiday cheer. Come mix and mingle and enjoy an afternoon of good old merry folk fun. Visit reedsimple.org forward slash events for more information. Reed Temple's R3 Youth Ministry presents Winter Wonderland, Saturday, December 17th, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, email youth at reedsimple.org. Reed Temple presents Family Skate Night at Skate Zone, Sunday, January 8th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Tickets are $10 per person. To purchase tickets, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Reed Temple's Women's Ministry presents Christmas Outreach, Saturday, December 17th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in person. Help us be a blessing this holiday season to children and women in the Community Crisis Center of Hyattsville, Maryland. Items will be delivered on December 19th. For more information and to sign up to volunteer, email minister to women at gmail.com. Reed Temple presents Hope for the Holidays, Help, Hope, and Healing, Saturday, December 17th, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in person. For more information, contact min steven at reedtemple.org. That's a wrap for this week's announcements. And please, let's continue to build the beloved community together. Hello, and welcome to the Reed Temple online worship service. We're glad to be at Reed Temple and so glad you decided to join us. Thank you for worshiping with us. this morning and give God all the glory and truly all the praise that is due him in here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Come on. 
yeah, right. Let the praise, let it mm. come on, everybody. Let the Lord, well, you say, well, let it ride, let the praise, let it among us, let it ride. Let the dance of the Lord rise among us. Let the dance of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Everybody, let the dance. Yeah. Come on, let Find yourself some space and dance unto the Lord in here this morning. Yeah, let it rise. Let the dance of the Lord rise. Come on, let the yeah, everybody rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise, everybody. Well, come on. Yeah, let the praise. Let it oh, let the shout of the Lord come on. You say, we say, yeah, let it pray. Let it. Everybody say this with us. Hallelujah to our internet family to read Temple everywhere. It is the first Sunday in December, and that means it's Communion Sunday, and it's the second Sunday in Advent, which means we're going to celebrate the love that came to live and dwell with us in the form of Jesus Christ. So, so if you brought the Christ child with you, and I hope you did, we're going to celebrate this morning. Come on, Reed Temple. Come on, Internet family. Let's do this. Let's start with our proclamation. What is today? Today is the day of our salvation. And so what shall we do? Praise God in his sanctuary. Come. Let us enter into his courts with praise. And now we'll recite the call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. 
For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed, blessed, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer all together. We'll sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. And now we'll sing together the morning hymn. The words will be on your screen. Let's sing together. Amen. Amen. second Sunday of Advent, let us focus our hearts and minds on the word love. Let us pray. Dear Lord, your word declares emphatically, it says it like this, God is love. 
And Lord, you gave us a deeper understanding because you said that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It is not proud and it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no records of wrongdoings. Lord, we come with hearts open for love. It is because you love, so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, as we come on this second Sunday in Advent, we come fully prepared to continue to receive the love that you poured down upon us from heaven. Uh, Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful, God, because truth be told, we can be some scoundrels every now and then. But Lord, through our missteps, uh, through our mistakes, you still show us that redemption comes from unconditional love. So now, Father, we walk strong in that love. We're going to walk with our heads held high and the world will know that the church itself, the church is made up of a community called disciples because of the love we share for one another. Ah, Father, have your way in this service today. I pray that this medicine of love will flow from the pulpit of Reed Temple today and it will reach the places, the crevices in our lives that just need a little dose of it. Father, can you go down in a loving way and go all the way down to hospitals far and near? Bring healings, Lord. Lord, comfort families in this hour. God, we need your love before, because some of us have lost loved ones. And it's imprinted in our minds and our memories. As we go through a holiday season, some are still in mourning. Father, we need your loving touch right there. Oh, Lord, uh, we thank you for a way station called Reed Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church. Because it is here where the lost, the least, and the left out can come and have their needs fulfilled through a loving congregation. And now, Father, we ask that you will endow the under-shepherd, the Reverend Dr. Marky Whitlock, Jr., to preach your word today with power, to preach a healing word that can change lives. Lord, endow him to preach a word so strong that even the devil might come to the altar looking to be saved. Lord, we declare it. We speak, we speak power down now into the airways. We speak power into social media, down into the lives of your people, Lord. Let them understand that no matter what they're dealing with right now, all they got to do is lift up their heads and let the King of glory enter into their lives. The King of glory set the captives free. I hear chains falling already. Lord, release your children from bondages and shackles that so easily beset them. Lord, we're ready, willing, and able to come to the house to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we open up our mouths and we begin to shout with the ark of triumph. You are our God. There is no other. We thank you for your manifold blessings. We thank you for to be able to call on your name in the midnight hour. We call on your name in the noonday hour. Lord, thank you for leaning over the banister of heaven, listening to our pleas, our supplications, and covering us in your word. 
we will do our best not to be anxious for anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication, we make our requests known unto you. Lord, thank you for throwing our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. We're ready for you, Lord. We're waiting expectantly for you, God. Lord, we love you. This is our prayer today. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, we say amen. Amen. And a amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if where you are, if you are able, turn your living rooms, turn your dining rooms, you turn your kitchens into sanctuaries and stand for the word of God today. It'll be coming from Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 42 through 44, the King James Version. Amen. And the word of God reads this way. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth, doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour, as you think not the Son of Man cometh. The Word of God. Amen. If I never live another day, Lord, if I never see your smiling face, if I never breathe another breath, I'll take another step. I want to say thank you. If I never hear what's to be heard, if I never speak another word, Lord, if I never see another sight, are you blessed me to take another bite? I want to say thank you.
Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you for the aggregation of singers. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your loyal fellowship online. It means so much to us. I do have some sad news that uh, Paulette Armstrong earned her wings. Paulette uh, was the president of the James A. Parker Lay Organization. And we will announce her funeral by and by, but we want and wish for you. Uh, reach out to Mama Armstrong Carolyn. Reach out to David Armstrong, the son. Reach out to the members of the J.A. Parker Lay Organization as we celebrate the life and legacy of Paulette Armstrong. It's now offering time, and we're thankful that you are participating in our offering. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your obedience to God. God has done so much for us this year. We've made it through the pandemic. We've made it, hallelujah, through trouble seen and unseen. We are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. This is our opportunity to lift up our offering, to certainly give what God has given us in obedience to God, what God has done for us. We're excited about what's going to take place on watch night. We're going to have two services at 12 and at uh, 10 p.m. For you to celebrate and bring your offerings and bring your life and start your life off right amen at our watch night service we thank you for helping us help others feeding and clothing and housing we thank you hallelujah for the support of our sanctuary thank you for the support of ministry right here at reed temple i'm gonna pray and we ask that you online would just simply text reed temple to four five seven 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 bless the lord as the lord has blessed you let me pray dear god in the name of jesus thank you for every gift received into the body of christ thank you god for those who are obedient unto word and unto god's word tithing is not just an obedient reaction but it's a love for god and jesus christ when we think about what god has done for us we can't help but give back because we are faithful, obedient Christians who dare not rob God of his tithe or offering. Now bless God, keep God, hold God as we march into this Christmas season. In your name we pray. Let the church say amen. It's now time for our communion service. This is one of two high moments in the church, two sacraments, baptism and communion. We invite you now to go and get your wafer. We thank the stewardesses for providing you your communion tray on Saturday. But we ask you to go get your juice. Go get your cracker. Go get your communion so that we may participate in that together. We're going to invite Reverend Mia Whitlock to come up, lead us in our communion services, and then Reverend Joe Deck will give us our Lord's Prayer. Let us begin. Amen, amen. Prayerfully, you have your elements. So I will call you, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Kneeling, bowing your head, closing your eyes. Now let's say the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things judge of all men we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought word and deed against your divine majesty provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us so we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. 
have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask that you would take your, wait for you would take your juice. But first, let me pray over them with the consecration of the elements. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Together, hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who, in the same night that he was betrayed by Judas, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, for me, and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Me. Now I take my wafer. I lift it. Dear God, I pray for those around the world who are experiencing the fire in Ukraine, fire in China, fire in Hawaii, the fire in Baltimore taking innocent lives fire in D.C. wiping out families. And God, I pray for safety, but most of all, God, I pray for salvation. Amen. Now, break it. Take it to yourself. This is my body, broken for you. Take, eat. Likewise, after supper, he takes the cup. Dear God, I pray, stewards, trustees, ministerial leaders, ministers of the roster, choirs, members, may their lives be enriched on this second advent. Help us to love one another as you loved us. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. This is my blood shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of sin. Take drink all of it in Jesus name we say amen we ask Reverend Joseph Deck to come and do the Lord's prayer for us amen let us pray our father who art in heaven hallowed it be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever forever and ever amen and amen amen my brothers and sisters after the singing of the sermonic selection the next voice will be that of our senior pastor the reverend dr mark e whitlock jr breaking off the bread of life
bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let us pray. God, this is your second Sunday in Advent. The word that leads us is love. Help us to love one another instead of hate. Help us to love one another instead of gossip. Help us to love one another instead of judge one another. Help us to love because when your son returns, he's going to ask, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was homeless, did you house me? When I was lonely, did you take me in? What you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. Did you love my neighbor? Did you love the other? Because the first time I came, the second time I'm coming back to judge you. Have you loved? Somebody beside yourself. Now touch the sermon, God. Give me a word to speak. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. Wherever you are at home, just stand where you are, where you are. Take a look at this Advent text. The Advent text that's chosen for this second Sunday is found in the book of Matthew, chapter. 24 verse 42 and it reads therefore keep watch because you do not know what day your Lord will come but understand this if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming he would have watched it would have let his house he would not have let his house be broken in two. Here's the last verse. Come on, read it with me. So you also must be ready. I want you to repeat that word. Two words, be ready. Be ready. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Take your seats for a little bit. The one thing we can say is Jesus is no thief, but do you know when? He will creep into your house, when he'll creep into your life, when he will creep into your city. Are you ready? The name of this sermon is, He's Coming Back Again. Look at your neighbor and say, He's Coming Back Again. My God, have mercy. I just saw one of my friends walk in, Reverend Martha Daniels. He's coming back again. Today is the second Sunday in Advent. The word that pushes us is love or peace. Are you ready when He's coming back? It is the love of Christ that gives us faith that he is coming back. The second Sunday of Advent challenges us to have faith that Jesus is coming back again. In his first Advent, Jesus came in the weakness of infancy to become the suffering servant of those who were helplessly lost. Oh my God, I feel like we're still helplessly lost. Anytime you can take the life of those who simply came to work in, in, in Virginia, if you can take the life of three football players who were sleeping, hallelujah, as they were going home, if you can take the life of people that are just simply going by their life day by day by day, we are still a lost people. In the second advent, he will come as a sovereign king and lord of lord. He, 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 he's not coming to save us this time, but he's coming to judge the living and the dead. Yeah. Ever since the ascension of Jesus to the right hand of the Father, which occurred 40 days after his resurrection from the dead, we've been watching and waiting for his return. Even unto this day, his return has been prophesied and preached and proclaimed in Bible school and believed by all who have placed their absolute faith in the word of God. 
I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here online. I want to make sure that I'm talking to your home. The belief that he's coming back again has encouraged, hallelujah, many broken hearts. The belief that he's coming back again has dried tears of sadness and sorrow. The belief that he's coming back continues to encourage sinners to seek salvation. If he's not coming back, then you shouldn't be listening to the sermon that I'm preaching today. Somebody write into the chat, he's coming back again. Oh my God, the content and the context of the text is a gospel lesson and a warning to be prepared for the return of the master. I got to say it one more time. He's coming back again. Those who heed the warning will receive great blessing. But those who do not will be accursed. Hallelujah. We must face the reality that Advent is very much out of sync with the prevailing mood of Christmas. Ah, Advent brings our attention to a risen Savior who returns, whose return seems long overdue. In many cases, when I look at television, I look at the television programs, I look at social media while we celebrate Black Friday and we purchase Christmas trees for living rooms and display pictures on flyers about the birth of Christ, show ornaments on buildings and decorations on lines, on lawns about the shepherd and the three wise men. Some of us even lift up Santa and Rudolph and the Root Nose Rays deal, but I got some news for maybe three of y'all. Advent is not about all of that stuff. Hallelujah. It's about the fact that he came and he's coming back again. Y'all need to give God glory on that. Here's the question. Are you ready when he comes? Can I ask you one more time, Deck? Are you ready when he comes? I'm not going to give you but three points today and it won't be long. Here's my first point. Advent requires having an unshakable faith to keep watch for his return. Advent means that you got to have an unshakable faith, hallelujah, to keep watch for his return. That's what the Bible says in 2442, back of Matthew. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know what day our Lord will come. If you're going to live a life that's truly, hallelujah, that keeps watch for Jesus, then you must possess an unshakable faith in God and Jesus Christ. If you're going to live a life that is worthy of of his return in order for you to see it you got to have an unshakable faith in God and Jesus Christ I just want you to write into the chat an unshakable faith that's what I'm talking about and I'm I have to say it Reverend me I'm startled Reverend Deck and amazed and perplexed at how easy church folk hallelujah hallelujah have a shakable faith in God that they're Faith is shaken, hallelujah, more than folk on the street. I understand folk on the street who ain't in church. I understand sinners like I used to be before I got into the church have little faith or no faith. But church folks are expected to have an unshakable faith. Am I right about it, Reverend Martha? They're supposed to have an unshakable faith in Christ. Yet I find instead of an unshakable faith, so many Christians reveal a faith that's, that is up and down, up one day, down another. That's an unstable faith. Uh, a faith that's stuck watching for evidence of things seen. That's an unbiblical faith. A faith that questions the ability of God, which is a weak faith. A faith that is constantly using secular systems to measure sacred spaces. That's an unreliable faith. A faith that seeks profit for every praise that you give, which is a professional faith, a faith that fails to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's an insincere faith, a faith that is fearful of people, places, and things. Hallelujah is a feeble faith. Wait a minute. There's got one more. A faith that does nothing, tries nothing, argues about everything, criticizes everybody, which is a dead faith or no faith at all. Good God Almighty. You see, the Bible 
says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is what the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Just because you don't see it yet, it don't mean it's not on the way. Just because you don't have a ring on your finger yet, it doesn't mean that the ring is not on the way. Just because you don't have that contract yet, it doesn't mean the contract is not on the way. When somebody has an unshakable faith, they never stop watching. When somebody has an unshakable faith, they never stop waiting. When somebody has an unshakable faith, they never stop praying. Let me say it one more time. They never stop singing. They never stop worshiping. They never stop, hallelujah, looking for Jesus. Because I believe the Bible says that he's coming back again. When somebody has an unshakable faith, they don't need evidence, but they trust in the Lord at all times and not lean to their own understanding. In all their ways, they are guided by the word of God. Why? Because they have an un shakable faith. I want you to write that in the text. That's my first point. You got to have an unshakable faith. Huh. Here's my second point. My second point is the second advent informs us that he's not coming back the way he left. <laughs> He's not coming back the same way. No, he ain't coming back the same way. The second point I'm trying to make today, this morning, is the second advent informs us that he's not coming back the same. Right in the pack. He ain't coming back the way he left. No. You see the Bible. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. You see, when the owner of house, if he knew when you was coming home, he would know, hallelujah, it's predictable. He knew you were coming home. He knew what you left with. If he knew it was coming home, he knew how you at least look. But what's the, when Jesus come back, he ain't going to look the same way he did when he left. You see, the advent, the second advent is he's not coming back the same. Somebody shouted at the text that he's not coming back the same. That's why John the Revelator said in Revelation chapter 19 verse 12, his eyes were as flames of fire and his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You see the second advent says he's not coming back the same way he left. Here it is. Let me give you some history. Then over 30, then over 2,000 years ago, Christ came as a babe. But when he comes back, hallelujah, he's not coming back as a baby. Here it is. Then he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. But when he comes back, he will not return, hallelujah, wearing some swaddling clothes. Here it is. Then he was born in a dirty manger because he couldn't find any place else to go. But when he comes back, he's not coming back to live in a barn. He's not coming back to borrow somebody's dirty room. Then he was judged and misjudged. But when he returns, I gotta say it, when he returns, he's not coming back as a convicted criminal, a common nobody. No, he's not. Then he was a servant leader. But when he comes back, he's not coming back as a servant. I stop by to remind you that the first time he came, he's not coming back the shame. First he came as a servant, but when he returns, he's coming back as the Lord of Lords. The first time he came to redeem us, but when he comes back, he's not he's coming to rapture the redeemed home to heaven. First he came to die on a cross, but when he returns, he returns to sit on the throne. First he came to be a servant, a savior, but when he returns, he's coming back as a sovereign king. Y'all don't hear me today. First he came to he came to humiliate it. But when he comes back, he'll return in his full arms. First he came to suffer in shame and disgrace. But 
when he comes back, he returns as a conqueror of death and then hell and the grave. You got to understand, first he came to seek and to save, but now when he comes back, he's coming to rule and to reign. I dare somebody up in this text to talk about that he's not coming back the same. When he returns, evil is evaporated, cancer is cured, racism is ripped, sexism is slayed, God is glorified, and if God is glorified, we are also going to be edified. You need to give God a glory praise because he's never coming back the same. Oh my God, I'm almost done. Don't push me. I'm coming back. I'm done. Here's one more. And then we're going to talk in their home. Here's my last point. The second advent requires being ready because he's coming back again. Hallelujah. The second advent requires being ready. Hallelujah. Because he's coming back again. He's coming back again, Rev. Me. Hallelujah. The Bible, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. So you are also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him hallelujah he may not come when you want him but he'll come right on time that's what my mama said i know i i know that i've given you two other points but let me make sure you remember what i said this morning the advent requires an unshakable faith to keep watch for his return the second thing i taught you was that he's not coming back the way he left no he's not here's my last one you gotta be ready because he's coming back again hallelujah can I say it like I mean it you don't have to get ready if you are be ready somebody help me if you be ready I know that's some ebonics but you understand what I'm trying to say you don't have to get ready if you stay ready because if you stay ready you'll be ready when he comes back Jesus Christ is suddenly coming back to receive us and an hour when we least expect him upon his sudden return great things will occur do you want to know what they are let me tell you what they will be on that day there will be neither sunlight nor cold on that day there will be a frosty darkness on that day known only to the Lord with no distinction between day or night on that day when evening comes there will be light on that that day God's enemies will be defeated and the Antichrist and the false prophets will be thrown alive into the fiery lake of the burning sulfur on that day Jesus will set up his kingdom and the Lord will be king over the whole earth on that day the dead in Christ will rise from their burial place no matter whether in Israel or Maryland that means your mama gonna rise that that means your daddy gonna rise that means your son's gonna rise hallelujah on that day the saints that the saints that are alive upon the earth will also rise to meet the Lord in the air on that day the saints mortal bodies will then put on immortality on that day the bodies that suffered corruption will put on the garment of incorruption on that day we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye so we shall ever be with the Lord did I say in a blink of an eye no did I say in an eye lip no but I said in a twinkling of an eye but I talked about it happening on that day on that day there will be no tongues of criticism on that day there will be no grapevines of gossip on that day there will be no coffins of death on that day there will be no nastiness of naysayers on that day there will be no shame of sin can I say it like a minute when he comes back and he's coming back again there will be no wars there will be no violent crimes there will be no poverty there will be no works of wickedness there will be no agony of defeat there will be no weeping no more there will be no form of fear I can't wait until he comes back because there will be no valleys of disappointment no loneliness of night tables of trouble can I say it like I mean it tables of trouble places of peril 
days of despair, thorns of the flesh, haters of holiness, trails of tears, and no more. Can somebody shout hallelujah? There will be no moments of misery. I got to bring it home, Colton. I got to bring it home. Stay with me because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, 24, verse 44, so you also may be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Somebody shout, be ready when the hour comes. Be ready when the last trumpet of God sounds. Be ready when the final day happens. Be ready when dispensation of grace is completed. Be ready when the fullness of time has come. Be ready. He's coming back again. And when he comes back, he's coming back wearing a crown. He's wearing a royal robe. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the ruler of reigns. He's coming back again. Somebody shout unto the Lord. He's coming back for me. He's coming back for you. He's coming back to lift my mama. He's coming back to lift my daddy. He's coming back to lift our lives. He's coming back. Hallelujah. That's why I got to get me with some Dottie Peoples. Dottie People says, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. One day, the Lord's going to crack the sky and the Christ will rise. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. No man knows the day of the hour and the Lord will surely come. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. That's why you need to get your house in order. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. You got to be ready. Oh yes, you got to be ready. I dare you to praise him in advance. Don't let the angels out praise you. Praise him in advance. Don't let the demons out praise you. But let everything that has breath give God a hand clap because he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back again. Glory, hallelujah. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, not that which is into the heart who believes, because the Lord is coming back. He's coming back. Yes, he is. Give God a glory praise right now. Write it in the chat. He's coming back for the living and the dead. Give God glory. Glory, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, and Amen again. Amen. Ah, he's coming back. The, the second advent. We got a lot to look forward to as the Lord will come back again. Ah, oh, glory, hallelujah. The pastor just preached a word, a powerful, powerful word. And, and that was the relevant question. Are you ready? Are you ready? I asked that question with a kind of urgent intensity because uh, as in this text that the pastor preached from, he said, we... You, you just got to be prepared. You got to be, you don't know uh, when that day, the hour, the minute, or the moment comes. But if you're ready, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. When somebody asks you, are you ready? Your answer should be, I stay ready because I know that Jesus is coming back. So I want to open up the doors of the church. I want to open up the doors of the church. That powerful word, I believe it entered into somebody's spirit. Somebody's been struggling about a state of readiness. Am I ready? Somebody has been wallowing and wrestling. Somebody, you may not even be sure that you know that you're saved. And then there are some who heard that message. You say, I need that, Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be ready. All you have to do is to go to our website at www.readtemple.org 
forward slash cares. Go right there. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Go right there and you'll find a button that says salvation. Please push that button. Push that button. If you're coming by way of our website, if you're coming through social media, maybe you're on Facebook, YouTube, all you got to do is put it in the chat. There are ministers there watching who we, I guarantee you will get in touch with you because your decision of salvation is the most important decision you can make on this side of glory. And while you are are there while you are there if you need a prayer if you need someone to pray with you if you need someone to touch the earlobe of God on your behalf Reed Temple is a praying church pastoral care team on the ready ministerial staff on the ready lay folk on the ready to pray with you and to get you through what you're going through so you can get to where God wants you to go to. Amen. You got, if you need prayer, go to the same location, readtemple.org forward slash cares. Hit the button for prayer, type it in the chat, and we'll get with you. And my last request, my last urgent appeal, if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a place where you are grounded and you're rooted, where, where you uh, don't have, you're not in position to have your spiritual foundation solidified, you need a home. You need a home. A homeless Christian is a hopeless and a helpless Christian. You need a place where people can love on you, where people get to know your name, where people make sure to check on you, uh, people who can look in your eyes and make sure you're all right. Can I offer Reed Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church? It has been my home for over 25 years. Let me tell you, I know what I'm talking about. It's a good house built on solid ground, on solid foundation. Pastor Mark Whitlock would love to be your pastor. Won't you join? Won't you come into the house of the Lord? Please come on in and we'll welcome you with open arms. Amen and amen. We're grateful. Uh, the pastor, I often say, he left it all on the floor. He preached every drop, every drip drop of that text. There's nothing left, nothing left. And we're just grateful for the power of of, of the message. Amen. And now is our time of offering. All right. Our time of offering. I, I tell you, after hearing that word, I believe that somebody's heart has been pricked and compelled to want to give. Why do I say that? Look at places you've given and that investment didn't bear any fruit in your life. Just think about that for a second. Some give to Starbucks. No return but calories and weight. Some give to self-help books. Still hasn't changed your habit yet. Some are given to Gold's Gym. Some are given to Planet Fitness. Haven't seen it yet. But can I offer you a place to give where the turn of investment is so amazing that the dividends will come in prayers to your life. The dividends will come that miracles can be wrought in your life. The dividends can be given that, that you can come in and your gifts can be stirred up. Give to the household of faith. And that household of faith is Reed Temple, the ministry of God. It's very easy, very easy to do. All you have to do is text Reed Temple to 45777 text read temple to 45777 or visit the website at www.readtemple.org forward slash give your tithes and your offerings can come into the house of the Lord I made a habit to pay God first because I know Matthew 6.33 is real in my life and in my testimony. To seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then he'll be, and then it'll come, uh, that priority will come unto you. Amen and amen. At this time, I'd like to pray over your offering. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you 
out of the abundance of our heart. We thank you for those who are giving out of resources, tithes, and offerings. We even thank you for the gifts, the time, and the talents, and their treasure. Ah, Lord, that giving is such a sacred place and a sacred space. Consecrate the offering now that's flowing into the ministries that provide food for the hungry, to the ministries that provide uh, opportunity for those incarcerated, for the ministries that go forth. Help us to continue to be a light in a place of darkness. And now, Lord, we ask that you give us the wisdom to use it only for the advancement of your kingdom. From the widow's might to the billionaire's building. It's not necessarily about equal giving, but equal sacrifice. This is our prayer. And we thank you for the cheerful givers that have given unto your, your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'll turn it back over to our pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Deck. Thank you, Reverend Mia Whitlock. Uh, please know we love you. Please know we care about you. Uh, we certainly would love to see you in the 930 service. Uh, please know I, I announced earlier. Uh, that uh, sister uh, Paulette Armstrong earned her wings. Uh, she was the president of the James A. Parker Lay organization. We will give you uh, uh, an ample announcement about when we will have the homegoing service here at Reed Temple. Uh, know that the Lord loves you. Know that the Lord wants to cover you and carry you. Uh, now let us have our benediction. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on every one of us. Know that he's coming back know that he's coming back again and that gives us great joy in jesus name we pray let the church say amen What's up, Reed Temple fam? Let's get into this week's announcements. Reed Temple Bible College presents Principles of Bible Study. Registration for spring 2023 is from December 19th to January 14th, 2023. Classes begin Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Apply online at www.reedtemplebiblecollege.org. Have you heard of Reed Temple's Sponsor a Child program? This is an annual program that provides Christmas gifts to children in need. You can register a child to be sponsored to receive a gift for Christmas or sponsor a child to receive a gift for Christmas. For those who are fortunate to help bless children with a holiday gift or donation, please visit reedsimple.org forward slash events. Reed Simple, in partnership with Capital Area Food Bank, presents the drive through food distribution at Reed Temple, Saturday, December 17th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. while supplies last. Distributions will take place on the third Saturday of each month. Reed Temple presents Christmas Sunday service. Come celebrate the holidays on Sunday, December 25th at 9.30 a.m. For additional information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Reed Temple family, come bring in the new year with us for our watch night service, Saturday, December 31st, 12 p.m. and 10 p.m. For more information, visit readsimple.org forward slash events. Readsimple AME Church Marriage Ministry presents 
The Marriage University Christmas Fellowship, Saturday, December 17th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Join us for some holiday cheer. Come mix and mingle and enjoy an afternoon of good old merry folk fun. Visit readtemple.org forward slash events for more information. Reed Temple's R3 Youth Ministry presents Winter Wonderland, Saturday, December 17th, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, email youth at readsimple.org. Reed Temple presents Family Skate Night at Skate Zone, Sunday, January 8th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Tickets are $10 per person. To purchase tickets, visit readtemple.org forward slash events. Reed Temple's Women's Ministry presents Christmas Outreach, Saturday, December 17th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in person. Help us be a blessing this holiday season to children and women in the Community Crisis Center of Hyattsville, Maryland. Items will be delivered on December 19th. For more information and to sign up to volunteer, email minister to women at gmail.com. Reed Temple presents Hope for the Holidays, Help, Hope, and Healing, Saturday, December 17th, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in person. For more information, contact min steven at reedtemple.org. That's a wrap for this week's announcements. And please, let's continue to build the beloved community together.